Hi, Tony. Hello. How are you doing? I haven't spoken to you since I saw The Father, which is just such an extraordinary movie. It's such, a, such an amazing performance and must have taken a lot out of you, I'm sure. Yes. Well, it was, um, for me, I, I, I made it, kept it very simple because when Florian Zeller offered me the part, I always attempt, especially in getting old, to really simplify the process. I don't analyze too much. And when you have a really great script, it's like a roadmap. So I just followed the roadmap, really. It was that simple. And because I didn't have to act old, because I'm old, I'm 83 yeah. now. And uh, <laughs> yeah, my back ached and my knees ached. I'm not a method actor in that sense. As well. <laughs> what can I say? It was, um, it, it was fun to do. I mean, the mm -hmm. subject was awful. But it was, when you have a great script, you have a wonderful cast, it's, it doesn't have to be hard work. So that's what I'm saying. It wasn't hard work. It was easy for me. I've been around a long time. There were moments at the very last piece when the man I'm playing, Anthony, um, doesn't know who he is, and he's with the, the carer in the hospital. And suddenly it hit me with devastating force right in the chest. This is all that we, we forget who we are. We forget all our anchors. We forget everything. That, to me, had a powerful effect. The truth for me, and I think this from... The father, it opened something in my mind that made me ponder my own life. I thought, I don't know how I did any of this. I don't know why I became an actor. I don't know why I did this. And I, and I look back over my life and think, I did that. This came up here. And that, uh, what am I doing here? And I can't account for any of it. I can't even take credit for it. So to me, it's um, a, an extraordinary experience just being alive. I'm happier now than I've ever been at my age because I don't know how I got here. I had no, no plans. <laughs> Part of my brain is probably very simple. I, I, when I was younger, I wanted to complicate everything. But now, working as an actor, I literally <laughs> just learn the lines and show up and uh, hope my instincts are okay. I, I just have such a ball doing it, you know, and I'm so glad to be alive and still doing it. I hope to do a bit more. It does feel, in some ways, you know, watching it, watching that performance felt like it did come from someplace else, you know, and something that's maybe bigger than you. I mean, sometimes I think I should just thank your parents for having you because, you know, you just came out that way. And um, in some ways, the talent oh, yeah. is not yours. You know? You're just... No, nothing to do with this. So tell me about Mauritania. When, when did you do that? Was that last year? Yeah, we did it last year. In fact, we finished, um, I think we finished the beginning of February, just as we were kind of getting the news about the impact of the pandemic. Uh, so yeah. when we left, we shot in Cape Town. Um, and so when we left Cape Town, we started being like, wow, this is, this is getting interesting. What's going to happen? And then lo and behold, you know, eight months went by. I'm not sure what happened in those eight months, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it feels like yesterday. It really feels like yesterday. We didn't go near Guantanamo. no we shot it all in Cape Town, South Africa, which strangely yeah. is a is sort of a perfect double. Um, we were able to do all the things that happen in Cuba because it's you know right on the water and it has those beautiful beaches and those beautiful yeah. bays, but also to get the uh, Washington DC locations and locations that look like a big city uh, with an incredible crew, you know, lots of great technicians and, and extraordinary, uh, ex just extraordinary actors. So we got lucky. Yeah, you were all extraordinary. It was amazing, and I mean painful to watch as well. The treatment in Guantanamo. Yeah, Muhammad's Muhammad story. It really is amazing, and you know, you do movies for different reasons, and uh, sometimes you do it just for the character, or sometimes because there's something about it you need to learn about yourself. And in this case, I think we were all there for him. We really wanted to tell his story because he's such an extraordinary guy. You know, 15 yeah. years. Um, in detained in prison without being told what his charge was, you know, after being abducted from his home by a foreign, foreign country for no reason. Um, the fact that he emerged as a better human being, somebody who, yeah. instead of being angry after years of torture, uh, psychological torture and isolation, he became somebody through his faith, really, that is joyful and isn't resentful and isn't angry, who is forgiving. That's really a real testament to Muhammad, whose character came through and, and was returned to us to be the man that he is. Yeah. Something like Nelson the Mandela, who had nothing but forgiveness after his release, said, don't put away all bitterness. And that's what people have to do. But this man is quite extraordinary. 
Yes. He really is. And funny, incredibly funny, you know, and happy and joyful and uh, loves movies. I think he saw, while he was in prison, he saw um, The Big Lebowski something like 80 times. You know, so he, <laughs> he learned English in Guantanamo from the 20 year old guards. So he kind of talks like a dude, you know, he's, he's just a lovely person. And the, the woman that I play, Nancy Hollander, is a, quite an extraordinary character too. Um, one of our uh, amazing civil rights attorneys uh, who mostly yeah. has defended people who are very guilty. So probably 90% of the people that she's defended are guilty, but she believes in the rule of law and in the constitution. Um, she's really kind of an American hero. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, so in the Mauritanian, I worked with uh, Tahar Rahim, who's a young French actor who plays Mohamedou El Slahi. And um, the actress with me, Shailene Woodley, who I just adore, it was so much fun for us because we just got to witness an amazing performance of an actor who was, you know, not acting, but just a real transformation. And it just felt such an, I don't know, like this little secret honor to be able to just be in the same room and to serve that performance. Uh, and it reminded me of that revelation, you know, that first time that you get yeah. that performance. Uh, there's a thrill, I think, to being with other actors, younger people, and watching them discover some things for the first time. Yeah, yes, yeah. So um, it's actually been nearly, to the day, it's been nearly 30 years since we did The Silence of the Lambs, hard to believe. 30 years. 30 years. I have a lot of really fond memories of that movie, of the shoot, of being in Pittsburgh, and uh, of Jonathan Demme, of course, who passed away recently, somebody that we, I know we both love. Um, are there any, any specific memories that you have of that time? I remember, I must say this, when I was in London in 1989, I was doing a, a film, in, a play in London. I had uh, sent a, a script, he said, I want you to read this script. I said, what is it? He said, it's called Silence of the Lambs. I said, was it a children's story? He said, no. And it would do, <laughs> it's with Jodie Foster. I said, Jodie Foster? Yeah, okay, okay. So I was, it was a hot summer afternoon and uh, the script came over and I started reading it and after 10 pages I phoned my agent and I said, uh, this is the best part I've ever read. He said, okay. And he phoned back about four hours later, he said, Jonathan Demme, the director. I said, God almighty. I said, well, so, so I read the rest of the script and Jonathan came over. I remember. We had dinner and he said, uh, I said, is this for real? He said, yeah. I said, okay. <laughs> He was such a wonderful guy to work with, and uh, I couldn't believe my luck. I thought, and I was scared to speak to you. I thought, she just won an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I didn't get to speak too much before the actual read through, so we just sort of held it, waved across yeah. the room and then sat down at the table. And as you launched into Hannibal Lecter, I really I felt like a chill come over the room, you know, and um, I felt gripped and I was just too scared in a way. It was like we were almost too scared to talk to each other after that. Yeah. Do you know what I remember about that? Um, you know, we do the scene in the cell and all that. Mm -hmm. They're going to have lunch in that big warehouse. And it was in the Westinghouse warehouse, wasn't it? I thought, how extraordinary. We're all sitting here having a meal and we've just been chomping on each other and making life hell for each other. And you were all having lunch. It didn't make any sense at all. And I thought, this is a strange world we live in. And that's why it's such an amusing game that uh, we, we get get up in the morning, go to a place and put on somebody else's clothes and speak lines that have nothing to do with us. And you think, what on earth is it all about? Yeah, well, that idea of... You know, that is the curiosity, I think, that we have as actors is to peer into somebody, you know, what, what made them who they are. When you come down the, the cells. Corridor. And John, how do you want to be seen? Do you, do you want to be, do you think you'd be reading or painting or drawing drawings or lying down on the bed? I said, I'd like to be standing here. Standing, okay. Why? I said, I can smell her coming down the corridor. He said, you're weird. <laughs> That's it. He said, Hawkins, you are so weird. I said, oh, my, thank you. And so I knew I'd pressed the right button. Jonathan asked me, he said, oh, who, who, what do you think? I said, I think he's a machine. He's like Hal, the computer, in 2001, Good Evening, Dave. Hmm. So he's like a submarine. John's a submarine. I said, he just comes in like a silent shark. Yeah. So... Tell me about Clarice, because how did you, because of my, my first impression when I saw, I think Jonathan showed some clips, and I remember the one when you get into the elevator with all those big FBI guys. <laughs> and I thought, that's it, this is brilliant. This is brilliant because there you are, this smaller person, this 
big macho male world coming in as the hero. It is very interesting. Um, yeah, there are certain images that kind of get seared into your imagination and you say, oh, that's, you know, that's the character. That's what it's about. You know, for me, Clarice, it was also about her voice, mostly because she was somebody that had been scarred by the, the bleeding of the lambs, you know, and the sound and how there was nothing that she could do to help them. And, you know, she couldn't speak and she had that child's voice. And in, in that way, she had this kind of quietness um, that she never used contractions. You know, she said, do not instead of don't and yeah. trying to be yeah. somebody that was correct and, you know, um, more grammatical and uh, that di didn't come from the background that she came from, that there was a lot of shame that she wasn't bigger that she wasn't stronger, that she wasn't louder, that um, in her past she, she had failed. You know, I, th I think that was the part for me, when, once I understood that, that sense of uh, this person trying to overcome the failure of what they were born, the body they were born in, um, yeah. I understood that she was, that that was her strength. You know, that her handicap yeah. in some ways, that she was just like the victims, she was just, you know, another girl. So just another girl in another town. The fact that she could relate to those victims made her the hero of the film. Well, that was a remarkable thing because when you're in Jack Crawford's office and you see the photographs and uh, he says, uh, you're going to see Dr. Lex and you see Hannibal the cannibal. And your, your nervousness and politeness towards him. You don't want to let Hannibal Lecter in that, into your mind. And I thought this is brilliantly set up. And that scene, um, that scene particularly, and I remember thinking, that's why Lecter pays you great respect because it's like, ah, so Jack Crawford sent you. Hmm, interesting. Mm -hmm. And he must admire you for doing that. Good for you, you did it. And these are idiots, these big boneheaded idiots around here. You are here. So we can have some fun. Gonna have some fun. <laughs> <laughs>